This is a set of instructions for how to speak with the devil, which those of you with any sort of brains might note is a potentially moronic idea on the face of it, one likely to accumulate in a number of thoroughly unpleasant fates. Honestly, it would be probably smarter to publish a credit card number on Facebook, or take up a career in crocodile wrestling. But then, that isn't going to stop you, is it? No, not if you're sincerely interested, at least. Technically, if you do everything just right, there's a fair chance you'll walk away scot three. And that seems reason enough for some people to decide it's a good idea, especially if you're the fate-tempting, thrill-seeking, scared junkie type. Or the desperate type. Which brings me to my point of clarification I ought to make. This is not a manual of any kind for a fasten the bargain. You know, the whole sell your soul type deal. Although, if you happen to bring it up in conversation, he certainly wouldn't be one to refuse. Following through with such a foolhardily bargain, however, would necessitate removing some of the precautions in which you put in place for your conversation. And I don't think I would need to necessitate the idea that I need to spell out why this is a bad idea. If you are really mathematically impaired and would want to trade something that would last an infinite number of years for something that might last about 90 tops, there is plenty of other rituals for you to follow. This one, if performed correctly, should only allow the two of you to talk. This perhaps begs the question of why exactly would you want to speak with the devil in the first place? Maybe some of you like the idea of making small talk with extremely dangerous occult entities. But, for the sake of the human race, I hope most of you aren't quite that stupid. Short answer is, he knows things. Things that you may have a deep, vested interest in finding out. I mean, he's not omniscient or anything, as much as he likes to pretend otherwise. He's not God. But, he definitely has a supernatural advantage over any kind of knowledge any human would be able to obtain. For example, he probably wouldn't be able to predict the next world war or tell you to cure for cancer. But, he could very well be able to predict the winning numbers of tomorrow's 500 million Powerball drawing, or tell you what deadly undiagnosed condition might be afflicting your loved ones. Of course, the Prince of Darkness does not just go around giving winning lottery numbers to anyone who asks, and anyone trusting any sort of information attained from the commonly described as father of all lies is liable to land you in a worse situation than you were when you started. However, if you're really dead set on finding something out, and you've exhausted all other options, there is a way to get accurate information out of the guy. You see, like so many more urban villains in popular culture, the devil has a bit of a penchant for games and gambling. Of, of course, the reason why he likes it so much is because he almost always wins. Unless you happen to be a fiddler named Johnny, or be represented by Daniel Webster, you're probably going to get your ass handed to you. But, if you're determined enough, and you want to face the risk and long odds, there is a certain game you two can play to win the information you need. First things first though, we'll start off with a description of the summoning process, and then get into the rules of the game and some tips on how to play. And finally, of course, the inevitable liability of arcane shit that could go horribly wrong. In order to contact your conversational partner, you're gonna need to go to a church at midnight, and it doesn't matter what kind of church, large or small, old or new, liberal or conservative, just as long as you're sure it will be empty. The last thing you want is for some preacher to walk in on you while you're in the middle of this, for the sake of the preacher's well-being, as much as your own. The process will probably work best if you're on a new moon or a full moon, a Friday 13th or Halloween. The actual day is less important than the psychological effect it has on you. As long as you don't try on Christmas Eve or something stupid like that, you should be fine. <laughs> it's, uh, time is important, however. Though, you don't have to start the ritual at exactly 12 a.m. Greenwich Standard of Time. <laughs> or anything like that, but as a general rule of thumb, you ought to show up a bit before midnight and have everything set up no later than 10 or 15 minutes after. 
show up a lot before midnight if you don't know how you're going to get in. Shockingly enough, most houses of God do tend to lock their doors at night. At least, no one, at least when there's no one there to watch over them. And remember, we want empty. Got it? There are, of course, certain things you need to bring and certain things you can't bring for this ritual. The things that you need are a full can of salt. You won't need to use all of it, but just make sure you have more than less, you know? Seven candles, red or white being preferable. Something to light the candles with. <laughs> You'll be shocked how often people forget this, but occult ritual or not, they aren't going to magically light themselves. A length of red string, rope, or yarn, or thread. A full-length door or wall mirror. <laughs> Ideally, you'll want to find one that's already present in the church. They are a bit unwieldy lugging around with you during a break-in. However, if there aren't really any there, then you're going to have to bring your own. You might also find it useful to bring some markers, pencils, or paper, or flashlight, or any sort of tools that will, might be necessary to secure entrance into the church. You will not be permitted to bring any kind of electronic timekeeping device. This includes all cell phones, smartphones, tablets, e-readers, mp3 players, PDAs, calculators, wristwatches, pocket watches, kitchen timers, hourglasses, etc, etc, etc. Seriously, it's worse than the ICTs. But if you're one of those people who practically has a smartphone wired into your brain, don't worry. You can bring those with you to the church as long as you leave them outside of the room in which you'll be doing a ritual. If you brought a flashlight, it's also helpful for finding your way around, but it also attracts unwanted attention, so leave that outside too. Also, do not bring in any sort of religious paraphernalia to protect you, especially if it pertains to the Abrahamic religions. And yes, if those gothic black cross earrings are facing right side up, they count. If you have any kind of holy symbol like that with you, the devil will simply refuse to show up. But don't worry, you're not going in totally unprotected. In fact, the supplies that you're bringing are not for any sort of dominating, de devil summoning ritual. In fact, it's only for your own protection. Uh, old superstitions and folklore and magic, etc., etc., to protect oneself from evil. From what I know of it, its effects are mostly based on a power belief, so you're prob there's probably numerous other objects and artifacts that and procedures you could work in as well. If you'd like to risk being left at the helpless mercy of the devil in or test your fairy, feel free to experiment. However, for any of those who do not have a psychotic death wish, I recommend sticking to the ritual as follows. Once you're sure you have the right supplies with you, make sure your way into the church and find some place to set up. It can be anywhere from the main sanctuary where services are held to the Sunday school classroom or walk-in closet. As long as you have a significant amount of open floor space um, to not be disturbed, you can set up your mirror. This is where the devil will appear when you summon him. As such, you mustn't complete the summoning ritual until you have laid down the certain wards around it. First, surround a mirror with an unbroken circle of salt. If the mirror is hanging on the wall of a door, lay down a semicircle around it instead. Make sure that the salt touches with the wall at both ends. Then, wrap around your red string around the mirror several times. The color red, of ri <laughs> the color red especially red string, is symbolic of protection in the folklore of many cultures and religions. This is also why we recommend red candles. It's a good idea. And speaking of candles, set them up and outside of your circle or semicircle of salt. Space them out at even, relatively even intervals, and no, you do not have to bring out a measuring tape to make it exactly perfect. But do at least try to make it look like as if it was set up by someone who's old enough to be trusted with matches. Light the candles in a clockwise-like fashion and being careful not to disturb the salt. If you break the circle, you have to start over once again. Once all the candles are lit and burning strongly, and your protective wards are complete, you are now ready to proceed the proceed with the actual summoning. <laughs> to do so, you must first get the devil's attention and demonstrate your resolve by performing some type of sacrilegious act in the holy space. Turning a crucifix cross upside down is fairly conventional, but it's not the only option. For example, I once knew a kid who once fulfilled this requirement by scribbling obnoxious graffiti all over the painting of Jesus in the Sunday school classroom. 
The nice thing about turning the cross upside down is that once you're finished with the encounter, assuming you survived in one piece, you can just flip it upside up again, and no one's the wiser. Sidestepping the relatively minor but irritating risk of having your Sunday school cl classroom turn to the reenactment of the Spanish Inquisition for the next month and a half. After you finish doing whatever offensive thing you decided on, shut the doors in the room and turn off all the lights so that the space is lit only by candles and then face the mirror and stare deeply into it, concentrating on your desired outcome. There are no incantations, no arcane strings of Latin you must recite, just look into the mirror and wish as hard as you can for the devil to appear. After a few moments of this, when you feel ready, count to ten and then open them. If all has gone correctly, you'll no longer be staring at your own reflection, but you will be looking at the devil, or at least looking at what the devil has chosen to appear to you. Chances are he won't like the conventional red. Chances are he probably will not look like the conventional red horned demon with goat legs and a pitchfork, nor any sort of terrible apparition. No, with the point of, there's no point in scaring you off now. Better lure you in, make you feel safe. To that end, he generally takes on the appearance of a fairly average, nondescript human being. If anything, he's prone to vanity and will lean towards the more attractive side of the spectrum. No, the only really frightening part about him will be his eyes. No matter how hard he tries, he cannot hide the sinister gleam smoldering deep within them. The malevolent amusement of hunger in his eyes. The eyes of a spider contemplating the fly which struggling in his web. They're supremely confident, those eyes. Confident and without pity. <laughs> Don't look into them too deeply or you'll feel, begin to feel helpless and paralyzed with dread. <laughs> Losing your hope and your will to fight. Since You'll probably be just standing there staring at him in shock of, and for a few moments, you know, having some level expected your ritual to fail, he'll initiate conversation first by asking you what is it you desire from him. If you can gather your wits enough to string a letter, well, string together a few coherent sentences, you should respond to something like, I wish to challenge you in a game of question and response. Even if you don't get the words exactly right, he'll know what you mean. And he'll gladly accept your request with a wide, predatory grin of anticipation. He's been playing this game for a long time, you see, and he's very good at it. Most humans, on the other hand, are very bad at it. This gives him a chance to, at, le at the very least, thoroughly mess up your mind at most. And well, let's save for the latency of shit that could go wrong for the end. You'll have to play it smart and just avoid justifying his expectations. The general rules of the game is very simple, with a few um, cav few cavits that can make things more complicated. He'll begin by asking you a question. He always initiates the game. It can be anything from some piece of obscure trivia to a riddle, to an extremely personal inquiry. Don't worry, you won't be immediately plagued into hell if you get the answer wrong, or anything like that. In a matter of a fact, he won't even tell you whether you got the answer wrong. After you've, after you've answered a question, you'll just be at, he'll, you'll get to ask one in return. Now, here's where the consequences of your response comes in. If you answer the question correctly, he'll respond to your next question as honestly and as accurately as he can. But, however, if you answered it incorrectly, he's free to lie to you as he sees fit. Perhaps if you asked him something about, you know, perhaps if you asked him something you're better off not knowing, he'll tell you the truth about it anyway. More likely, he'll just feed you the most insidious, damaging lie he can come up with. Either way, after he's responded, he'll ask you another question, and the process will repeat over and over again until you decide to call it quits. <laughs> Sounds simple, right? Now, you may be sitting there, thinking it sounds fairly easy to get the information you need. <laughs> All you have to do is wait for a question you can answer correctly, and then take that opportunity and ask them what you really want to know. <laughs> Ignoring everything else they said. Well, it's not that simple. The devil will never give you an easy question, and he'll never give you one that you can completely be sure of the answer. He may instead give you questions that you may have vague knowledge of, that you maybe you might know the answer to, but you're not really not you're not really confident. 
thus forcing you to endlessly second-guess yourself, obsessing whether or not you can trust the information that he gave you. Perhaps you'll think what he said was a lie, or wish it was a lie, but internally, you're consumed by doubt, unable to fully convince yourself that you were wrong. Or perhaps you have a huge choice. Perhaps you have a huge choice based on the information he gave you, and you'll be tormented rather to you be tormented by the fear of indecisiveness as you realize that your fate, or perhaps the others as well, rests entirely, rests entirely upon if you are able to correctly, correctly recall some arcane piece of trivia that you don't even remember now. You'll never remember the exact question the devil asks you, by the way. That wouldn't make it too easy for you to go back to check your responses. Or maybe, instead of testing your knowledge, he'll ask you something personal. Something you yourself even lied to yourself about. You'll answer back to him, thinking you've gotten the answer correct. <laughs> no, I don't resent my sister. Yes, I would totally turn the money to the police. But he'll know better. <laughs> he'll know better than you do. He'll know that you're lying. And he'll lie to you in return. And you will believe him. You'll believe him until you are no longer able to decide to yourself. And by then, it might be too late. Or maybe, maybe he won't even give you the chance for an accurate response at all. Maybe he'll just ask you an endless string of questions that are completely impossible to answer. Making it you more frustrated and disheartened as you realize you'll never be able to force him to tell you the truth. Like, questions like, what was the exact height of Mount Everest in centimeters in the year 1666? Or, what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? All the knowing his sense of humor, he'll never... Although knowing his sense of humor, if he ever were to ask such a the question, he will be he'll accept African or European as a correct response. There are a couple of ways to short circuit this particular strategy, however. Additional rules and courses of actions that can make the game more interesting from you being stonewalled completely. Although in all honestly, he probably wants you to try for one of those options anyway. The first option is to ask him a riddle instead of a question. If he somehow managed to stump him, and he answers the riddle wrong, he'll be obliged to tell, give you a truthful response for the next question. But if he answers the riddle correctly, once again, you don't have to worry. He won't pounce on you like a sphinx or drag you into the pits of hell. What will happen is they'll get a pass, allowing him to lie in one of the responses and one of the questions that he would otherwise be obligated to answer truthfully. Honestly, if he gets a pass, you might as well just quit right there. It's nearly impossible to determine if he's telling you well the truth or lie under the best conditions. Adding another layer of complexity consistently, trying to figure out if he would use his pass, it's enough to make any normal person's brain explode, so there's just no way. Forget it. The second option is to take a dare from him. If you accept and file to follow through, then once again... He'll have to answer your next question truthfully. If you choose to instead reject it, he'll get an R pass. Now, before you freak out on the whole idea completely, you should know that he won't ask you to do anything overly dramatic or unspeakably evil like blow up a hospital or murder a group of orphans. No, as a rule of thumb, most dares will involve direct l will not involve any Direct loss of life or major felonies, however, they certainly won't be easy. Inflicting, inflicting severe pain on oneself or doing something that terrifies the shit out of you, cutting off a treasured relationship, or publicly humiliating yourself or someone you love. All these things are, if all these things and more are things that you're not able to imagine are completely on the table. If you're willing to go that far to put yourself in this kind of position, then you'll get your answer. However, if he manages to come up with the one thing you simply cannot do, well then, once again, you might as well quit. One last thing. Don't think you can just tell him that you're going to do it and then not do it. If you're going to accept a dare and don't follow through with it, well, let's just say the consequences will be extreme. Just stick with it and keep your promise, no matter what it was. Trust me, it will, you're better off that way. Finally, when you've either gotten the information you wanted or given up completely, you may end a game or ritual by simply thanking the devil for accepting your quest and bowing politely at the waist, bidding him a farewell. 
The surface of the mirror was seen to swim and flicker for a moment, and then you'll be looking at your own reflection again. Only when you're absolutely certain that you're looking into your own two eyes, you may turn away from the mirror, flick the lights back on, and start dismantling your protections. Now, and this is important, even if you haven't gotten the information you wanted, you must end the ritual before 66 minutes have eclipsed. Well, to be technically 66 minutes and 60 and 66 minutes and 6 seconds. <laughs> Subtle, right? But if you're seriously going to cut it that close without any kind of timekeeping device, you're probably screwed anyway. I cannot emphasize how important it is that you keep to this time limit. I'll save the reasons behind that for the end, but don't skip ahead because I still got a few important tips on how to play. 1. Be careful to not give out any sort of personal information. <laughs> Try not to talk about yourself and especially about your emotions and problems, any more than absolutely necessary. This guy knows human psychology like it's the back of his hand and he will get inside your head. It's like talking to Hannibal Lecter, give him enough information to work with and he, and, he, and even if you do not believe a single word he says, he'll still find a way to fuck up your mind like nobody's business. If anything he asks you to make you remotely uncomfortable, don't hesitate to lie through your teeth. There are plenty of other questions. On a similar note, try to keep the game on track moving briskly. Unstructured interactions of any kind should be avoided. Chances are that at some point he'll try to draw you off on a tangent discussing something that fantasizes you or analyzing the responses you've given him, or finding some other excuse to speak at length without moving the game forward. This is not only a waste of time, but valuable. But not not only is this a waste of valuable time, but it's also another excellent opportunity to mess up your mind. Three, if you choose to give them a riddle, choose one that you made up yourself. If the riddle that has ever been written down anywhere at all, from the pages of The Hobbit to some long lost ancient tome of magic, he will already know the answer. That said, it has to be a legitimate riddle, with the answer making logical sense from some angle. You can't just say uh, something was green, has ten legs, and hops, and then claim for some incomplexible reason that it was a marshmallow. Nor can you ask him a straight question like, what have I got in my pocket? <laughs> you probably knows that anyway. There are no hard and fast rules to determine whether a riddle makes sense or not. But you're a reasonable human being. Your answers ate from the tree of knowledge. Please, for the love of crap, use common sense. 4. If you choose a dare, there's a slight chance that the devil will ask you something seemingly easy. Deliver a letter, for instance. Or scribble a 10-digit number on a public restroom stall. If he does ask you for something like this, and if you even have a shred of common decency in you, do not accept. Chances are that you're that he's using you to further some sinister plot, one liable to ruin a lot of lives or harm a lot of people. Who knows? Maybe you're the type who really doesn't mind throwing a unknown number of people or strangers under a bus to find out what you want to know. But at least be aware that is what you're doing. Five! <laughs> Last but not least, be very aware of the time. It might help you to do some practicing beforehand to get a feel for how long an hour is without a watch. The devil will probably put off discussing the things of you you're most keen on finding out for as long as he can. And as long as you near the 60 s and and as long as you near the 66 minute deadline, he'll start trying harder and harder to distract you, captivate you, and otherwise just keep you playing until it's too late. He'll string along and feed you into the little glamours of false hope. <laughs> keep you thinking. Just a few more minutes. Almost there. <laughs> Don't fall for it. Don't go over the limit, no matter what. Now, you might be thinking the game doesn't really sound so dangerous so far. Threats of psychological damage rarely seem to carry the same weight and threats as physical damage, even though their costs are just as often as great. Hate to burst your bubble, kid, but <laughs> this game is far from safe. There's plenty of ways for you to seriously screw yourself over, both physically and mentally, not to mention spiritually. And it is with these I will conclude. And in the vain hope, sort, uh, in the vain hope, make some sort of impression. 
first? Well, you're speaking to the devil. Do not let him out of your sight. Keep staring into the mirror no matter what happens. He will undoubtedly try various tricks to make you look away. <laughs> You'll hear noises from behind you. You can feel eyes at the back of your neck. See shadowy phantoms watching in the depths of the mirror. Feel cold breath blow from you behind. Smiling like the crypt. A dead silence will settle only to be interrupted by a SMACK directly behind your head, giving you about the worst jump scare you've ever had. Hell, the devil might even abandon the measure of his own digni dignified facade, his own dignified facade and give you a sudden jump of fight and shock, shouting loudly or pointing behind you in a very convincing look of terror on his face. Whatever he might touch you with, you must not look away from him. If you look away and lose sight of him completely, even for a second, you will look back at the mirror and he'll be gone. Well, not gone, just out of the mirror and in the room with you. Exactly how much of your body the police will find the next morning and what state it's in will depend entirely on the sort of mood he is in. The same thing goes if you break any of your protections you've laid down at the beginning of the ritual, interrupting the circle of salt or letting the red string unwind, knocking over a candle and le or letting one go out. Any of these things will free him from the mirror. And then, well, you're a bunch of creative horror junkies, I'm sure you can fill in the blanks. On a different topic, you may reach a point in the game, probably after a long series of mind-maddening impossible questions, where the devil asks you, the deceptively easy, easy question. What is your full name? You must not give it to him. <laughs> Names is a thing of great power. Although the devil will, of course, already know your name. Telling it to him yourself is akin to t letting a vampire into your home. Your name is deeply synonymous with your own inner self. And thus giving it him, well, your name is powerfully symbolic of giving him yourself. If you are foolish enough to make this mistake, all your, all your protections will be for naught, and he will seize upon you. He'll seize upon your unwitting offer with malice glee, stealing your soul and dragging it back to hell with him. <laughs> At least this way the police will find a complete identifiable body, and matter of fact, your vacant shell will be totally unblemished, seemingly having dropped dead of sheer terror. Last, but certainly not least, the matter of which this happens if you go over the limit. This is arguably the worst thing you can do. You won't think so at first. The devil will give you no indication that you have, in fact, exceeded the limit. And you will conclude a game and ritual as normal and as if nothing has gone wrong. Perhaps, as the devil's image in the mirror trembles, he'll give away a particularly nasty triumphant smirk flash across his face, but you'll be easily dismissing it as your imagination. You'll turn on the lights, look back and gather your belongings, and then go to leave the room. But when you open the door, you'll see nothing. That's right, just flat, white void, expanding infinitely in all directions. The only room which was reflected in the mirror now exists. Incidentally, if you turn back around to face the mirror again, you may catch a last glimpse of your own reflection. Perhaps it will even turn in favor to you and give you a smirk with a cheeky wave before sweeping out the door into the perfectly normal church hallway outside. As you have already figured out, you yourself no longer are in the church. Your soul has been trapped inside a mirror and the devil's taken liberty of possessing your body. Now that you're no longer using it. Pound on the glass and scream all you like. You'll never get out on your own, and <laughs> no exorcist can help you now. But don't worry, it's not like you're in hell, right? <laughs> At least not necessarily. What you have to understand and see is that the human soul stripped of its bare flesh is deeply volatile and a vulnerable thing. Especially when trapped in the land of the living, you are now entirely pure mental properties. And as such, the barriers between what is real and what is imaginary have been completely dissolved. As you, as you fill that reflected room with your anger, your sorrow, your fear of being trapped, these emotions will 
bring you to console us, giving your mind form. If you're not particularly imaginative, those creatures may not be too terrible. They may not be able to inflict too much horror or pain. With time, though, you might be able to teach yourself to get rid of them. However, yours of the mind truly haunted by monsters. A mind that is vibrantly creative and imaginative and more than usually twisted. Well, there's no telling what horrors might come clawing its way out of that maelstrom of tasting sweet release from the confines of your subconscious, hungering for your terror and suffering. They will refuse to be banished, dragging you away, kicking and screaming into endless feedback of loop and pain and fear. Needless to say, if you're a regular patron of these websites like these ones, you probably are well fucked. There's no way to release you from the mirror and the world that you've created therein. They say that if you call the devil once more and ask him to free you from the mirror, he'll be willing to take you out. For the usual fee, of course. Who knows? Maybe if your imagination is twisted and powerful enough to create a personal hell, that leaves you begging for the real thing. Those talents may be put to good use. There are several billion people in the world, after all. And even the devil himself can't be messing with all their minds at once. Talented help is always appreciated. Of course, the corollary of you being trapped inside the mirror is that the devil gets to do whatever he wants of your body until sunrise. At around a time, your body will mercifully drop dead from the strain of the possession. Autopsy will probably identify the cause of death to be some type of coronary event. Don't get too relieved though. He is perfectly capable of stirring up plenty of trouble in those few hours. For instance, he may decide to do something big and dramatic, like purchase a large meat cleaver and go on a murder spree, starting with the names in your address book and working his way out to complete strangers if he has the time. Or perhaps he'll focus only on one person, someone who trusts you completely, using your persona to get him or her alone and vulnerable. And then, well, there, well, there's no need to describe it here. Once again, I am sure you can think of a few things. Starting to see why I say this is the worst outcome yet, of course there's also a chance that he won't lay a finger on your loved ones, instead deciding to do something a little bit more subtle, more insidious, like drop a few nondescript, unmarked packages on a certain doorstep in a dangerous part of town. Or a local, or locate a particularly dusty, yellow-aged text in the storeroom of a local library. And intentionally misfile it under the young adult's literature section. Whisper seven very choice words into the ear of the distracted young redhead waiting for the 3 a.m. subway train. Or maybe decide that... <laughs> In this day and age, the warning su superstition is not enough people are getting interested in games, and knowledge of them is in danger of being lost. Maybe he'll decide that he needs to get the work out. <laughs> Peek at a few of your browser histories, see where the impressionable and curious minds are hanging out these days. Maybe he'll write a quick tutorial in a modern prolance to see how to instruct the obsolete dangerous text post it on the internet and see how many bites he gets. <laughs> maybe I should have left, maybe I should have gone there, but if you made it this far without shine, a little twist at the end isn't going to put you off, is it my dear reader? I'm sure there are plenty of intrepid adventures among you with the burning questions you'd like to answer. And you all are a smart bunch, you know the pitfalls, you know where the conventions where you live and breathe, these sort of things, so do you not? You know there's no way you'd fall into the obvious traps, right? You're not some dick or Jane off the street after all. You'd be bringing a whole new level of competition, wouldn't you? Oh, excuse me for a moment. I think I hear someone calling me. Hey! I can't take it anymore! Get me out of here! <laughs> Please, let me out. What? <laughs> you want that badly already? <laughs> Must be one hell of imagination you got there. <laughs> Perfect. 